What's up everyone? Welcome to Rex Engine. Hope everyone's having a phenomenal day. This tutorial is going to be about setting up phase one of the Bazooka Rex boss encounter, and it should be really useful to anyone who wants to know a little bit more about Rex Engine's AI system or setting up complicated enemies um, or bosses or what have you. Um, so I'm going to start this off by showing you guys what this is going to look like when it's finished. Um, so what this, what this phase of the boss fight is going to look like when it's all done. So in the last video, if you recall, um, you should go back and watch that one if you haven't, it was about setting up the boss intro. So it's this little roar sequence the guy is doing right there. And then that segues into this section you see now where the boss is running back and forth, chasing the player. Um, and he, he does attacks depending on how close or how far he is from the player. So if he's next to the player, he's going to do that little slash attack. And if he's further away, he's going to fire a missile instead. Um, man, and I really need to figure something out because my screen capture software it just slows my computer down to a crawl. And like I, like, I feel like I have to keep saying this in videos, but like, this runs at a really, really good speed and it's completely this capture software. Um, so I think going forward, I'm going to try and figure out a solution for that. But in the meantime, thank you for bearing with me. Um, so let's dive into this. Um, so I've got an older copy of this boss, Bazooka Rex, on the stage here. And I'm just going to go back and forth and use him for reference um, as we build out this new version of him. So the new version is mostly empty right now. Um, if we expand him, we can go into his AI. Um, all of this, by the way, if this doesn't look familiar, um, definitely go back and watch the previous AI videos because those cover the groundwork leading up to this point. So if we expand this guy's AI game object, um, we have the AI intro, which is the intro sequence we saw before that was covered in the last video. And then we have AI phase one, which is all the stuff we just saw where he's running back and forth and attacking the player. So that's what we're going to be building out right now. Um, so for the time being, this is all empty. If we look in the inspector, we can see he's got nothing under movements or sequences or events. And that's what we're going to add here. So to start with, um, let's just get this guy running back and forth. Let's make it so he runs back and forth and changes directions when he hits the wall. Um, so to do that, we're going to click under movements here. And I'm going to click on the add movement button. And we've got some different options here. What we want specifically is the patrol movement. Um, that's sort of the basic movement. It's just moving back and forth and turning around when they hit either a ledge or a wall or something like that. Um, and we can see that added this new patrol movement here under the movements game object. So if we click on that and look at that in the inspector, um, we've got some different options here. Starting direction is which direction he moves at the start. I'm just going to do already facing because we've already got this guy facing left, so he'll just keep walking in that direction, or start walking in that direction rather. Um, under turn, I'm going to make it so he turns on wall contact. Uh, we could leave on ledge contact on, but I'm actually going to turn it off. Um, it doesn't really matter because there's no ledges anyway. Um, move in wave is straight up, this is the Castlevania Medusa heads button. Um, I'm going to leave that off, although feel free to experiment with that if you want. <laughs> Um, jump, we're not going to have him jump, at least not in this phase, although for the next video he will. Um, and I think that's about it. Let me reference the old version really quickly, which already has this. Um, yeah, all the same stuff. I mean, I guess I left on on ledge contact for that, but like I said, it doesn't matter. Um, so if we test this guy only with this right now, he should just walk back and forth, um, and he should turn around when he hits the wall. And that should be about it. He's not going to have any attacks yet, but we will do those next. There we go. So he's just going to keep doing that indefinitely right now. Um, so let's give him some attacks. Um, so what I'm going to do here is click on AI phase one. And under sequences, I'm going to click on add sequence. I'm going to add a new sequence. And we can name this anything, um, but since this is the sequence where he does attacks, I'm going to call it attack sequence, because I am just completely unoriginal. Um, and so we can see under the attack sequence here, the first action by default is just a wait action, where he waits for zero seconds and then nothing happens. Um, so let me check my reference here. So we're going to keep the first one as a wait action. 
but rather than zero seconds, I'm going to set randomized time, and then I'm going to make it so he waits for anywhere between one and two seconds. So that's the first thing he's going to do. Okay, the second thing we're going to do is I'm going to click on add action to give him a second action in the sequence. And I'm going to click on change movement action. And what we want to do here is the movement he's doing is that patrol movement where he walks to the left and the right and turns around when he hits a wall. And what we're going to do is make it so he stops, so that patrol movement pauses. And so I'm going to click on set mode to wait. And that's going to take his current movement, which is the patrol movement, and change it from active mode to wait mode. So basically he's going to stop running and he's just going to stand there. And this is good because we want him to be standing still when he does the attack. So the next action I'm going to do, I'm going to click on Add Action. Um, oh man, this is all getting cut off, I think, below the screen. Um, there we go. So I'm going to scroll down and click on Face Target. And by default, the target type is going to be the player. Um, this drop down here, you can also choose an object to face based on the name of the object, or you can drag and drop an object and have him just face that. Um, but the player is what we want, so I'm going to leave that as it is. So what we've got so far is he's going to he's going to be running around, he's going to wait between one and two seconds, and then he's going to stop and face toward the player. I'm going to give him another wait action here, just for 0 0.25 seconds, and this is basically just to make it so that after he stops and faces the player, there's a little bit of buffer time. So he finishes turning kind of, and so it's going to look nice and clean before he does the attack. And then I'm going to add a new action, and this is where he's going to perform the attack. So I'm going to make an attack action. And if we look under this guy's attacks subheader, um, he's already got the projectile and the melee attack built in. Um, there's many other videos on the channel already where I go over creating attacks in a lot of detail, so I'm not going to reiterate that here. Um, this is It's just a pretty standard projectile and melee attack. Um, so let's start off by giving him the melee attack, I'm just going to drag and drop that attack into the slot here. Um, it's not a projectile, so I'm not going to click the is projectile box. And so what we should see now, um, I'm actually just going to play this so you guys can see it, is this action here is going to, I'm going to set the loop type to forever, so this is going to keep looping. So what we're going to see is this, is, this action is going to play over and over and over indefinitely, is he's going to wait then he's going to stop, face toward the player, and then do the melee attack. And then he's going to start moving, or actually he's not going to start moving, I don't think, because we haven't set that up yet. Yeah. So, so right now he's just going to stop there. So under the attack, if you recall, we want this guy to do a melee attack if he's close to the player, and a projectile attack if he's further away. So under the attack action here, I'm going to click on Add Branch. So the branch, um, I think I went over this a little bit in the previous video, but the branch allows you to make it so different actions happen under different circumstances. So in this case, the different circumstance that we're checking for is, is he close to the player or is he far away from the player? And if so, we want a different attack to perform. Um, so this is going to give us a branch where by default the branch is just based on a random number. Um, but what we want is not to be a random number, we want it to be based on how far he is from the player. So if I click on edit branch slash action, we can do change branch type. And the top option here is distance. So I'm going to click on that. And now the option here is um, we can set use dimensions to x and y. I, we only really care about whether or not he's close to the player on the x-axis. Um, the operator here is going to see if the branch triggers when he's within the distance or if he's outside the distance. So I'm going to keep it on into. So this is going to trigger if he's, let's say, within um, five units of the player. And like before, like with the face target thing, there's a drop down here so we can decide what it is we're checking against. So by default, that's the player, but we can also use an object's name 
or we can drag and drop any object from the scene in there to see if he's within that distance of that other object. But let's keep that on player. And so now we've got two actions here. We have this top action is going to perform if he's within five units of the player. And otherwise, the bottom action is going to perform. Um, so this top action here is by default just a wait action. But I'm going to click on edit branch and action again to change the action type to an attack. Um, I'm going to drag his melee attack into the slot. And I'm actually going to drag his projectile attack into the other slot. Um, click the is projectile button. That just lets Unity know, it lets Rex Engine rather know that it's a projectile. And there's further options there for like aiming the projectile if you want those. Um, but in this case, we're not using those because the projectile just fires straight forward anyway. Um, so what we've got now is this whole action where if he's within five units of the player, he does the melee attack and otherwise he does the projectile attack. Um, so let's test that out and let's see what we've got. So he's really close, so he's doing the projectile attack. And let's see what happens if I run further away. Now he's doing the missile. And if I move in close, he should start doing the melee attack again. There we go. Um, so this is actually the bulk of this AI routine. And the last thing we really want to do is make it so that he starts moving again. So he starts running again after he attacks the player. So let me check my reference here. Um, so after the attack, I'm just going to do another wait action. Um, I find putting in lots of these wait actions is really nice, just so all the actions aren't happening at once. So it, it's kind of clean, like you can do the attack and then you give the player just a brief moment to respond to the attack before this guy starts running towards them again. Um, so I'm going to click on add action, click on wait. And we'll make that one really quick, it's just 0 0.2 seconds. Okay, and the very last thing we need to add here is the, the action to make him start moving again. Um, so this is literally just going to be the opposite of the action we took to make him stop moving. So I'm going to click on change movement. So we add a change movement action. Under the change type, I'm going to click on set mode to active. Um, so the last time we did that, we did set mode to wait up here, which took the current movement and just paused it, basically. Set mode to active is going to unpause that. Um, so now we should have a finalized loop where this guy is going to run toward the player, stop, attack, wait for a moment, and then start everything over again. Start moving again, everything. Um, so let's see what we've got. There we go. So we're almost home free. Um, the very last thing we want to do here is set this guy up so he's ready to segue into his phase two form, where he's got some different movements, he's got some different attacks, and he's got a pretty crazy super attack that he does when his health gets really low. Um, so we're going to build that out in the next video, but I do want to leave this with, with the action for him to segue into that form. Um, so we're going to do that with an event. So what, what this is supposed to do here is when, when the player attacks him and he gets under 50% health, he changes to that second more dangerous form. Um, so I'm going to click on AI phase 1 again, and under events, I'm going to click on add event. And I'm going to click on the top option, which is a damaged event. Um, so the way events work is they're basically, they're like actions and sequences are proactive and events are reactive. So the event is like him reacting to certain other things happening. And then responding, um, depending on what you, what you input there. So the way he's responding in this case is he's, he's reacting to being damaged. And if I click on that event, under events damaged. Um, so what, this is set up with a when do formula. So when, he's get, when he gets damaged, 
Uh, and the option here is hit point type percentage um, less than or equal to 0 0.5 because the percentage is set up from 0 to 1 with 0 being 0%, 1 being 100%. So this is when his hit points fall below 50%, then do, and then you can put actions here. Um, and in this case, the action we want, if I do change action type, I'm going to do um, change AI routine. And there's a slot there where we don't have it yet, so I can't put it in. Um, but we're going to have, in the next video, we're going to have his AI phase 2 routine, which is the second upgraded, more damaging, uh, more dangerous version of this boss. Um, and so in that video, we'll start that off by dragging in his phase 2 routine into this slot. So that when, basically, when his hit points fall below 50%, he transitions to a more dangerous AI routine. Um, so there you have it. Um, I really hope that helped everyone. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will talk to you very soon.